We want to build Africa's largest extended reality training facility where people can be trained in mixed reality, in game development, in photography, videography as well, so that they can monetize their skill sets, participate in this digital economy. Our work spans across different industries. We cover the edtech, the educational technology space, but also offer advertising services to our corporate clients. Most of our bespoke solutions are in the extended reality space. We really use XR to get as many eyeballs to people's screens. And once they're here, then we can kind of grab them, heightened engagement, improved screen time as well, so people actually engage with the brand and not just skip and flip through. We actually keep them captivated with these fun and immersive ways of creating content. XR stands for extended reality. Think of it as the roof and then there are different pillars underneath it. VR, which is virtual reality where you put on the headset. You have mixed reality. You still put on the headset, but you can still see the immediate environment. And then you have augmented reality where you simply use your smartphone to project 3D objects like your social media filters you get on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. The challenge of creating new stuff is what excites me every day. Different clients will have different challenges for us. We have a really unique relationship with Maurice Crespi and the Schindler's Wing. When Vezo approached us, I'll never forget, they said that with the computers that they were using, it would take five hours to render five seconds of digital graphics, digital rendering. The first thing we did is empower them with new gaming computers. I think I brought that down to several minutes. That was a big game changer for Vezo. And from there, their creativity just bloomed from that moment on. When we began working together, we put together a NFT. Now the NFT involved legal components, it involved graphical components and involved blockchain components. And Vezo got involved in the visual side, the scanning side, and actually putting together these assets. We took Nelson Mandela's warrant of arrest. We took Oartambo's spy gun pen and a digital representation of a rhino horn. And all of those non-fungible tokens or NFTs were sold and raised over 2 million rand. We helped tokenize and archive an important part of South African history. With Maurice, we literally aligned instantaneously it's like a shared value ecosystem. We really, really bonded and we produced amazing work. We're going to walk the same path for many, many years. Certainly if the inner city project takes off and I'm sure it'll be a massive, massive success. It's been an explosion from there. In that short period of two years, we've managed to work with a number of different corporations. Helcom, Shell, Lubricant, Mercedes-Benz, South Africa. We've worked with schools and even now moving into artists and individuals as well. We want to eventually long-term create our own engine something to rival the likes of Unreal and Unity. I see ourselves as one of the giants providing an engine so that people can express their creativity and also make money at the same time. We want to help enhance Africa in terms of the digital transformation strategy. That's kind of like where we're at now. Bringing culture and innovation so that people in Africa can identify themselves with it and not just think it's for a certain demographic. These are merely tools, but what's important is the intention behind the tool. And that's really where we want people to get empowered using these tools to help solve immediate practical problems.